Monish Babrai. Some people think of him as a younger version of Warren Buffett, but he is a well-known value investor who recently warned that certain sectors of the market are showing symptoms that are very similar to how things were in the 1920s, 1960s, and early 2000s. In each of these epochs, there were instances when the market was euphoric, but we all know how it turned out. So let us take a brief listen to what he has to say and his explanation for why he believes this. But first, if this is your first time here at the Smart Stocks Academy channel, let me welcome you. And to be the first to know when a new video is released, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. So if you're ready, let's get to the video. In the 1920s, uh, we had a major bubble in automobile companies. So any company with the name Motor in it uh, would go crazy. And we had hundreds of auto companies in the US because all these bubbles have a kernel of truth. And the kernel of truth at that time was that the horse's history. That was true. Okay, the horse's history and automobiles were going to be huge. And that was also true. So there's always a kernel of truth around which, which a bubble gets built. But eventually, 99% of those businesses turned out to be bad investments for investors. Okay, it was terrible. Then in the 1960s, uh, early 60s, there was this Tronix boom. So if you had a company with a name ended in Tronix, okay, it got spectacular valuation because it was all about this mi microelectronics and transistors and how that was going to transform stuff. And that was also true. I mean, semiconductors and all of that have transformed our lives beyond belief. But 99% of the businesses went bankrupt. They, they don't exist, okay? Then in 2000, it was dot-com, right? Anything dot-com. Again, a great kernel of truth because it was truly transformative and we truly had something revolutionary and it has changed. I mean, without the iPhone, you don't have Uber, okay? The whole Uber and Airbnb and all these ecosystems or DoorDash, they cannot exist without the iPhone. The iPhone is basically a, super, a supercomputer in your hand, okay? So that enables so many other industries. But, but in the year 2000, again, the dot-com boom, there was a core kernel of truth that, yes, technology is huge. But again, 99% of the businesses went away, right? And now we have crypto, right? So and EV, yeah, and EV, yeah, and 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 so the the thing with 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 the with the crypto end of things is that there's new coins and new currencies being created every hour. Yes, right. I mean, it's a frenzy because everyone thinks, hey, I can create my own and whatever else, right? And I I remember that. Uh, you know, I used to go every year to the Harvard Business School campus for a week. I was doing uh, executive ed with them. And we would meet the um, MBA students for one night for dinner, Wednesday night. Uh, there were a bunch of YPO and, and uh, the MBAs we went out for dinner. And every year, the MBA students were very polite because they knew that we were an industry, we could give them jobs. They, they were very polite and uh, you know, on best behavior and whatever else and passing you the resume and all of that, right? In 1999, um, no, in early 2000, it, this was in February 2000, I remember, uh, when, when I was on the Harvard campus, um, the MBAs weren't even interested in coming to dinner. Okay, like it was hard. Their professors put a lot of pressure on them saying, listen, you, you signed up for this thing. You don't show up. I will take it out elsewhere. So the arms of twisted to come for dinner. And at dinner, they told us, listen, man, all of you guys, a bunch of dinosaurs, okay? In about six months, my net worth is going to be 5x what your net worth is. I got the startup, I got the VCs, I, I'm going to disrupt the chemical industry, I'm going to disrupt the thrash industry, I'm going to disrupt the pets industry, and I'm going to do this and that, whatever else. And when we went back in 2001, Things had gone back. To so that was the bubble. In 2000, you just saw that bubble where they pretty much were giving you the middle finger, yes. telling you that you are a total idiot. Yep. 
and and that's the way it is and so uh, so i think that crypto i think the last time i was seeing it's the total value across all of them is more than like 3 trillion um uh, that 3 trillion in my opinion will disappear to nothing so what monish is doing is analyzing the market today and the specific area of interest or right is speaking about the cryptocurrency sector it is important to understand that he is not referring to the market as whole rather he is referring to bitcoin and other meme stocks when you go back through history you will notice some extremely interesting patterns if you look closely you will discover that all bubbles contain what probably refers to as a kernel of truth let's go back to the 1920s or the roaring 20s when the automobile industry saw a massive bubble but why was there a bubble in the first place because automobiles were visible to everyone it was evident that they were going to transform the world because they were so much easier to use than a horse and cart. It is much more comfortable to travel much farther and much quickly. This was the kernel of truth and everyone wanted to invest in the auto industry because they wanted to make money. But most automobile firms went bankrupt, including Auburn, Cole, Crow, Davis, Alcar, Grant, King, Kurtz, Mother Mercer, and Saxon. Okay. In the 1960s, any firm whose name ended in Tronics attracted a large number of investors who believed that semiconductors, cables, and transistors would alter the world. While they did transform the world, the majority of these types of businesses failed. Investors lost money as a result. The year was 2000, and it was the dot-com era when people realized that computers, phones, and the internet would revolutionize the world as we knew it. As we all know, you're currently seeing this video on the internet. However, most internet startups failed with the exception of Microsoft, Apple, and Amazon. And they did change the world. None of us know what Broadcast.com, Pets.com, North Point Communications, Global Crossing, Napster, Infospace, and Lysos are because they all went bankrupt, as did most dot-com enterprises. Today, the price of cryptocurrencies is following this pattern. We all know that crypto will alter the world and the way we use money, but that does not guarantee that most cryptocurrencies will prosper. Almost every day, we hear about a new coin that has been created and is the next one to buy. However, Arbri believes that most of these, like automobile businesses in 1920s, electronics in the 60s, and dot-com stocks in the 2000s, are in a big bubble and will crash to nothing. Because human psychology is fascinating, we experience huge FOMO, or fear of missing out, whenever we encounter someone we know who is less intelligent than us but is getting wealthier than us. They are a lot wealthier than me now, and I am way wiser than them. This isn't right. So we jump into investment as well, causing the bubble to expand. So for example, how many people have we seen online get rich with cryptocurrency? A lot. And they are generally young people who lack a degree and aren't particularly bright. Everyone notices this and wants to become wealthy as well. However, investing solely because you have FOMO is not a sound approach. Okay, let's say you have 100 cryptocurrencies right now. Over time, if you're lucky, only one or two will survive, while the rest will fail. So people engage in hot potato investment which entails purchasing something with the expectation that someone else would pay more for it in the future. They'll take the hot potato away from you and you will make some money, but you have no idea what that investment's true intrinsic value is. One of the common characteristics we observe with these bubbles is that people don't comprehend the underlying assets, and their investing thesis is driven by greed and street talk. You talk to a friend and learn that they recently made some money. You go on YouTube and learn their asset is going to make 100 times in profit. You think about it and determine that crypto will alter the world. So you decide to put your money here. And everything I just stated holds a grain of truth that probably talks about how crypto will alter the world. But if you fully comprehend the complete picture, you will notice that only a few cryptocurrencies will reach the top and that most will fail. But I think folks want to enjoy the celebration and make some money while they can before everything turns to pumpkins and mice. For those who don't know, that is a Cinderella illusion. However, Habrai went on to discuss Tesla and showed why, unlike crypto, Tesla is not necessarily in a bubble. 
Well, Tesla, Tesla again. But you know, Elon just got named man of the year, man of the year yeah, by time. time. He is a very unusual person. So I'll just tell you something, a little bit about the auto industry, just for the, you know, for the Tesla fans who are looking for some fodder. <laughs> and I don't know, I, I I hate giving them fodder. You're about ready to, though. but uh, they'll be in but, the comments. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but you know, uh, maybe they'll just take this portion of the video and play it. So. I I was invested for a long time in the auto industry. I studied the auto industry. I we did really well with the Fiat Chrysler investment. If you look at a business like Fiat Chrysler, they were making about 5 million cars. A year. Yeah. Okay. 4 million of those cars didn't matter because the margins on those were less than $1000 per car. They were you know basically hyper competitive marketplaces and there no margins or anything. The area that they made a lot of money was Ram trucks mm-hmm. and Jeeps. okay and and on the luxury end so if you if you look at a uh, at the truck business the ram truck business or the ford 150 whatever very simply if you just say that the company is making $10,000 per truck for example which they can make because it's a very protected market and great brands and let's say for argument's sake uh they're making a million trucks i mean they're making less than that but some of them are making a million let's say ford is making more than a million trucks a year um a million trucks a year at 10000 is a 10 billion in operating margin okay and that's a good business and even though it's got capex and all that it's a good business and if it's growing a lot you could justify a 20 30 40 multiple on that so you could say it could be worth 100 to 400 billion okay tesla is now produce has already produced a million cars a year and Elon is not nowhere near done now he doesn't make 10000 per car mm-hmm. he doesn't even make 5000 per car no but the but what is possible with tesla is that at the end point that tesla gets to they could easily be making 5 or 10 million cars a year okay and they could easily have at least a couple of million of those cars with at least $10,000 margins that is within the realm of possibility and the other thing about Elon is he'll go into businesses we can't even think about it's like my turkey guy you know i'm i was thinking about what else did he come up with so the thing with Elon is what else does he put into tesla now now the nature of this bubble with tesla is that uh, i was talking to some doctor in new orleans and i played dumb you know he was as all in tesla all his money everything's in tesla right and he's telling me about all the great things about spacex and he thinks everything spacex is inside tesla. tesla oh boy okay and then he's telling me about the hyperloop okay and everything hyperloop is in tight oh tesla oh boy yeah okay so what i'm saying is that the the nature of the bubbles is people don't go into the details right right and they just say okay everything elon is everything tesla and it's and, not, and, and, it's and, not. and and they they say look he will go you know tesla test uh, spacex has a business starlink which will do uh, satellite based cell cell phones right starlink could disrupt the the cellular business it's not within tesla it's within spacex and charlie was telling me he thinks spacex is worth more than tesla spacex is actually probably worth a lot more than tesla uh so intrinsically the, or market cap currently well it's a private business it's not valued you know but uh, but i would just say that they are running circles around everybody else okay i would like to break this down because many people particularly value investors believe that does the stock is overvalued if we look at the past year the price has increased by more than 2% it has a market capitalization of 1.03 trillion after 5 years Now is this a bubble and does its market cap justify it? But Bry feels that we cannot say that Tesla is in a bubble because if you try to anticipate the future, it is only in the range of possibilities that Tesla justifies its 1 trillion dollar market worth. Okay, let us look at the figures. Tesla sold almost a million cars in 2021, but Elon Musk is not stopping there. In 10 years, it is feasible that Tesla will be selling 5 to 10 million cars per year. with at least a couple of those millions making $10,000 profit per car. So $10,000 multiplied by 4 million equals a multiple of 
So you pay 30 times the profit and you have a value of 1.2 trillion. And that is just the automotive side of the business. They also have energy generation and storage, as well as anything else Elon may come up with, which we never hear about. So saying that Tesla's stock is obviously in a bubble isn't entirely correct. So where does the prospects in this industry lie? Is there any place to put our money if everything is so expensive? Abrai has recently made investments in the Chinese market. However, you could argue that, wait, didn't he sell his large holdings in the Chinese firm Alibaba? Yes, he did reduce his Alibaba investment by 77%, but this was for tax loss harvesting purposes to reduce his tax burden. He then shifted all of his money into the stock process, which is essentially a stock exchange. Tencent, the giant Chinese entertainment behemoth, can be owned in a less expensive indirect manner. He still likes Alibaba, but he thinks Tencent's business model is better. So these Chinese stocks like Tencent, Baba, and Baidu have all been hit hard recently. But Abrai sees opportunities in this area of the market, but not cryptocurrency, AMC, GameStop, or any other meme investment, at least in the long run. And with that, today's video comes to a close. If you haven't already, show your love and support for this video by hitting the like button, subscribing, and turning on the notification bell next to it. You'll be the first to know when a new video is released. Hope you had a wonderful time, and we hope to see you again in our next video.